Okay, today I'd like to talk to you um, about something I like to call in my lecture metabolically targeted therapy. Um, the research in my laboratory focuses on metabolic dysfunction. Um, I'm going to focus in this session just on the cancer. Tonight we'll talk about ischemia, those of you who would like to attend that session. Um, when we look at metabolic dysfunction, we follow the subsequent pathogenesis and then we attack the modes of intervention um, in order to combat uh, the disease state. In this case, we uh, look at cancer uh, for today's lecture. Now, one of the things that has linked my work together in the ischemic arena together with the cancer arena is hypoxia. Hypoxia, a low oxygen level in tissue. And when you talk about neoplastic hypoxia, there are three major means that bring about, about neoplastic hypoxia. The first of which is perfusion hypoxia. And this is with, as you have increasing anaplasia, so the cells become less, uh, the neoplastic tissue becomes less differentiated, what happens is you have irregular angiogenesis occur and su subsequently uh, poor perfusion to that tissue. The second type, when you talk about hypoxia in, in, in neoplasia, is diffusion. With that rapid mitotic rate of the cancer cells, you're going to have the vascular tissue not being able to keep up. So their pace is going to fall behind, again resulting in a hypoxic condition. And last but not least, as a result of the treatment, you have anemic hypoxia. Uh, usually this is a side effect, as I have, as of the treatment, and with decreasing amounts of oxygen delivery to the tissue as the patient becomes more anemic. So all of these conditions result in a metabolic condition in a cancer that results in a hypoxic environment to that cancer cell, to those cancer cells. Now, this hypoxia is associated with the degree of anaplasia. Um, the reason is the greater the mitotic rate of a cancer cell, the slower the vascular perfusion. Also, you have irregular angiogenesis occurring, so that's going to slow down the perfusion rate to the tissue. Um, together with the, the, that situation I told you about a minute ago, um, the anemia. <clears throat> now, what does a cancer cell do in response to this hypoxic environment? Because I had mentioned to you, my lab looks at metabolic dysfunction and then the pathogenesis that results, and then try to attack it, use it to our advantage. Everyone in this room has heard of the word molecularly targeted therapy. That's where you look at a gene, the presence of a gene, or a receptor, and you target your therapy uh, to, say, breast cancer based on the expression of a receptor or lack thereof. Um, but what about a metabolic dysfunction to this tissue? Can we use that um, together with conventional therapy in an integrative capacity or alone as a treatment modality? So that's why I, I coined that term for this talk. Now, what does the cancer cell do in response to this hypoxic environment? It adapts or makes compensatory responses. And it does this via a gene, something called HIF, hypoxia-inducible factor. And when I was at the conference last year, we talked about HIF. And this is a means to allow the cell to make a metabolic switch from an aerobic environment to pri primarily rely on an anaerobic environment, glycolysis. And you've all seen that, and we see a picture of a PET scan of the brain here where the, you see the uh, tumor cell lighting up because it's relying primarily on a glycolytic pathway. Now, what is HIF? For those, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, this today, but for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, we had known about it in the ischemia world for over a decade, but in the uh, uh, cancer world, people have started focusing on it in the last few, uh, few years, maybe half a decade. In normal oxygen states, it's, catalyt it's destroyed catalytically by an enzyme called von Hippel-Ledo protein. And in a hypoxic state, since that enzyme's sensitive to oxygen, What's going to happen is that its levels are going to start to increase. So HIF levels increase. And particularly HIF-1-alpha is the one that's sensitive to oxygen. It forms a dimer with another form, the beta version, and these molecules together form an activated HIF molecule and allows for a physiologic and metabolic adaptation to the neoplastic environment. Now, what are those modifications that occur? Well, the first thing you see is an upregulation of a number of genes, and this is part of the talk that I presented last year. I changed it rather than looking at a molecular approach to this physiological approach. There are compensatory responses. Due to the poor vascularization, some of the genes that are activated stimulate angiogenesis, VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, stimulates angiogenesis. 
Also, because of the anemia, you stimulate again a compensation. You stim erythropoietin stimulates cell specialization. But then there are also adaptive physiological responses. Since you've made this switch now to an anaerobic dominated、um, metabolic cascade, you have to then favor this pathway. So, what HIF then does is increases glucose transporter one, the protein that shuttles glucose into the cell. You also see an increase in the glycolytic enzymes. Again, they're responsible for the anaerobic cascade. And last but not least, carbonic anhydrase nine. Everyone talks about cancer cells being in an acidic environment. Carbonic anhydrase nine is the molecule that's responsible for convert, converting carbon dioxide to carbonic acid, one of the major means of removing CO2 out of the cell. This is disrupted. It actually is cleaved by、um, HIF one. Now. Talking about metabolically uh, uh, means to address or attack cancer cells is nothing new. Otto Warburg did it over 80 years ago. He referred to cancer cells as being anoxic. That wasn't correct. We've now realized that it's they're hypoxic. But an article that appeared in、um, Science in 2006 focused on energy dysfunction, metabolic dysfunction, and what allows its tumor cell to grow out of control.